Hi everybody, welcome to Acute Medicine Shorts. These are uh, brief tutorials um, that are to give you some uh, key tips on the practical skills that are required in the acute medicine. And today's uh, first episode is about oxygen and oxygen prescription. So what are the acute medicine shorts? Well, these are going to be brief tutorials on key aspects of acute care. They are summaries of guidelines and best practice. There will be reference to guidelines where applicable. And this one is if you search for the British Thoracic Society um, oxygen guidelines, uh, you'll be able to find them easily on the Internet. If you have a topic you'd like covering, the usual email is james.piper at University College London, ucl.ac.uk. Also, please like or comment on YouTube. So principles. So remember, this is key. Oxygen is a treatment for hypoxemia, not breathlessness. Um, one of the most distressing symptoms that patients can ever have are symptoms of breathlessness. But it's also important to bear in mind that patients who are breathless are not necessarily hypoxic. Um, particularly patients who have uh, COPD when they have exacerbations will often feel very breathless but not be particularly hypoxic. There's a requirement for oxygen to be prescribed according to a target, target saturation range. You want to aim to achieve normal or near normal saturations for all acutely ill patients except for those of risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure and I'll describe those in the next slide. The target range of saturation should be 94 to 98 unless specified otherwise, such as 88 to 92 for those at risk of hypercapnia. It's also important to realise that those who have respiratory expertise, such as consultants and respiratory registrars, may adjust the range according to expert knowledge of the patient. And I'm particularly thinking of patients who have uh, pulmonary fibrosis uh, when I think of that. Remember, we uh, follow the NEWS2 system for uh, all acutely unwell patients. And remember, by default, as circled on the left, that all patients should be default scale one unless prescribed. Otherwise, usually that prescription will be done in discussion with a registrar. Patients need regular monitoring through the NEWS regime using a SATS probe. And it's important to remember that in order to have a good SATS probe, uh, you need to have a good flow across it. So you need to have reasonable uh, blood flow and reasonable oxygenation levels. Remember that uh, saturations are only not really useful in patients who are well. If you have an unwell patient, then you can, should consider doing arterial blood gas. Remember by default as well that having uh, oxygen on will give you two points on the new score. So illnesses that may require high flow oxygen include cardiac arrest, resuscitation in critical illness, shock, sepsis, major trauma, drowning, pulmonary hemorrhage, anaphylaxis, status epilepticus, major head injury and carbon monoxide poisoning. Conversely, those at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure include moderate or severe COPD, severe chest wall or spinal disease such as kyphoscoliosis, neuromuscular disease such as uh, motor neuron disease, severe obesity, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis and narcotic and sedative overdose. So how do we prescribe oxygen? Well, first of all, this is a um, snapshot of a oxygen prescription chart from the Royal Free Hospital. You want to uh, prescribe the target range, so either 94 to 98 or 88 to 92 and customize. You want to prescribe obviously the date and the device. So for example, NC, nasal cannula, V for Venturi, FM for face mask and H for humidified. You then want to prescribe the flow or concentration of oxygen. So for example, you would have 94 to 98 NC two liters. That's target saturations of 94 to 98 via nasal cannula at two liter flow. As it's a medical gas, it requires a signed prescription as any other medical prescription. Delivery systems, these are nasal cannula. These are designed for flows of uh, two to four liters. It's difficult to specify percentage FiO2. For example, two liters via nasal specs is not the same uh, as 24% oxygen. You can have high flow nasal specs, which gives a little bit of PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure, although this requires a very different system to the one shown on this slide. 
Um, nasal cannula really should only be used in stable patients. This here is known as the Venturi system. These are fixed flow devices and these are useful for control oxygen or titration of oxygen. This table here summarizes nicely uh, the oxygen delivery devices, their flow rate and percentage concentration. I would just add caution, as I was just saying about the nasal cannula, that I think it's very difficult to make the comparison that two litres via nasal specs is the same as 28% oxygen, as it depends, for example, how much the patient breathes via their mouth or nose. The Venturi system, however, is much more of a fixed system. So, for example, two litres via a blue coloured Venturi valve is the same as 24% oxygen, white, four litres, eight, uh, sorry, yellow, eight, red, 10, and green, 12. A non rebreather mask, which you're about to see, delivers roughly between 85 and 90% oxygen. It's important that if your patient is prescribed oxygen for a long time to consider humidifying it. This is particularly important in vulnerable inpatients who are at risk of hospital acquired pneumonia. Oxygen at fast flow is a very drying gas, therefore it will dry the oral mucosa, uh, increase the risk um, of oral thrush, for example, and hospital acquired pneumonia. So one of my final slides is this is a non rebreather mask. This is us and can deliver a concentration of 85 to 90 percent oxygen. I apologize for the rather bad clip art of a red flag, but this is important as I'll come on to in a moment. So prescribe your patient's target oxygen saturation, prescribe your patient's oxygen device flow and any humidification. Any increase in FiO2 or reduction in percentage saturation should prompt review and probably a blood gas and or a chest x-ray. Uh, as I was saying about the red flag, any patient needing a non rebreather mask is such a red flag. Why do I say that? Well, these are often very poorly patients who will have significant either comorbidity or a serious primary illness. They will need a senior review and escalation of treatment decisions. Certainly, it's wholly inappropriate for patients to be left on a non rebreather mask. And for example, one of my golden rules is that no patient should be on a non rebreather mask for four hours or longer without having had a decision about their escalation of treatment. For example, are they for CPAP, NIV, intensive care, and intubation and ventilation? And certainly if you're unsure and the patient's on a non rebreather mask, uh, this should prompt review by your registrar and the intensive care team. And finally, on a cheery note, never forget oxygen is combustible and therefore it's important that patients should always be advised never to smoke and we should make sure that our hospital stay a fire free environment. Take care, everybody, and I'll look forward to producing the next acute medicine shorts for you. Any questions, as always, uh, you know my email address. Otherwise, thank you for listening. Like, comment or subscribe on YouTube. Thanks again.